there, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about two Hammer films with Robin Hood and this box set, this indicator box set. Now there's a third one made by Val Guest, the 50s, which is not included. And there was a, t a TV pilot that's also not included that the Hammer bought up and distributed called Wolf's Head. But the films you do get here are Sword of Sherwood Forest and A Challenge for Robin Hood, which are the two films, uh, both in colour and both released in the 60s. The, the first one, Sword of Sherwood Forest, was the, the bigger production of the two. It was directed by Terence Fisher, who was the big Hammer director of the 50s and the early 60s. And he was like the guy that did Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, Phantom of the Opera, Cursed the Werewolf. He was a top guy. I mean, anyone who's watching this who knows Hammer knows who Terence Fisher is. And he's, he's a director, if you see a Hammer film, that's really good. There's a good chance he directed, especially the first half of the of the, the run of horror movies. If it was really good, a good chance he directed it. The second half, they brought in a lot more interesting directors as well as him. So then it's much more harder to find who directed it. But the early period of Hammer beyond Frankenstein, he became their top director. And this was one of his minor films. I mean, A Challenge for Robin Hood was much later. They had a director in who wasn't really the Hammer director and who would sub subsequently go and do like children's movies after this. But he was like a normal uh, professional director. But then the second one was a much, a much lower, lower level production. So I saw the Sherwood Forest I starred Richard Green as Robin Hood. Now Richard Green had played Robin Hood in the TV show for four years before this. And... He always thought that he could do a TV uh, film version of him as Robin Hood. By the time we got there, he'd done it for a while. He started to age out of the part. He was starting to look older. And that became kind of the problem with the film. The film is not that good, to be honest. It's not that dynamic. I much prefer a challenge for Robin Hood of the two. And some of it's to do with the script and something to do with Richard Green. Richard Green's okay in the scenes where he's talking to people and he's doing the manipulations as Robin Hood been smart under pressure. But when he's doing the kind of uh, Robin Hood as like, the action guy, he looks a bit old. Especially when you put him against Nigel Green who plays Little John, who's a lot more dynamic and he's like, he'd be much better Robin Hood in this film. <laughs> he really would. He, But Richard Green had played Robin Hood in the show and that was a selling point as Richard Green as Robin Hood in a big film. So he became the big the big uh, actor for this film. But he was kind of the liability in lots of ways. You also have Peter Cushing as Sheriff of Nottingham. And Cushing is it's an odd thing that he gives a lot of energy to it because he likes swashbucklers. He was in a lot of the hammer swashbucklers of the time. But I think his the writing of this part is pretty bad. He's doing his best, and when he gets a good scene, like a scene where he's trying to manipulate someone into giving them information, and he's lying to them, and he says he won't kill them to give them information, and then he kills them after he gets information. It's a really good scene, but it's to do with the fact that Peter Cushing is doing the scene, and he knows how to do that scene. That's the kind of scene he can do really well. But the rest of the film, the sheriff's kind of an idiot. And the sheriff kind of uh, does lots of stuff that's... He know it was no won't work, and Cushing's doing his best because he's energetic about the f being in this film, but he's working with very bad material that doesn't quite make sense because he's not the main villain in the film, and his part goes up and down. He's always like, "I've got another plan. Don't worry, this one didn't work, but another one coming." And then when you watch the thing, the film is like he didn't have any plans. He was just bullshitting. Really, he didn't have plans. He was just making stuff up as he went. And he had all these things about how he there was another plan behind this plan, that he would be fine. And ultimately, it's just like, uh, no, nah, I just don't think we're very smart. It's, again, it's because Peter Cushing's playing him, you're not thinking that way as you're watching the film. You expect there's something smart coming, and there's not. It's just an actor doing his best with dodgy material. And they're lucky to have him for this film. Um, the real villain is this aristocrat who has Oliver Reed as one of his sidekicks in a very bizarre early performance. And he's good as well. 
But his plan doesn't seem to make that much sense, ultimately. He's going to assassinate the, the Chancellor, who's also in charge of a lot of the budgets and stuff, for King, for John, Prince John, as they wait for, Prince, for King, King Richard, I mean, to come back from the Crusades. And it's like, well... You're going to attack him. Isn't John going to think, okay, why do you kill my Chancellor and my Archbishop? Who killed him? And it's like, one of those things is like, it's not really well thought out because the plan is they're buying up all these properties of these people who died in the Crusades to their property, off the properties. The Chancellor has figured this out and he goes there with very few men who all could get killed quite quick. And then has to try and escape, and Robin Hood's trying to help him escape, you know, to um, reveal the plot. And it's a very kind of unengaging plot, because it's about people doing something that you know they were probably doing in the first place. And the Chancellor is maybe this good character, but really, the Chancellor probably wasn't in real life. Well, not that this is a, this is a made-up story, obviously, but in historical things... All this time, there's a good chance if you're a chance of a King John, you're probably dodgy as hell. And it's just that thing is this guy's meant to be a good guy, and you're thinking, I just don't buy it. I don't buy this this person, this situation, be a good guy. It just feels like you know, this care person would pop it out of themselves in a different way. So you've got a good guy you don't really buy, and you've got the price see Robin who try to save him from these other villains who are vaguely sketched in. And you have lots of scenes, of decent scenes, of like Cushion manipulating somebody. You have another scene where Richard Green goes undercover. Even though he's Robin Hood, and even though they're going through near Sherwood, and there's a guy who's really good at arrows, why wouldn't you think he's Robin Hood? Because Robin Hood's famous. You have a first meet with Maid Marion in this thing, in this version of it, even though Richard Green's looks really old compared to everyone else. It's like, this is this looks a bit uh, dodgy. And it's just a bunch of vague characters floating through this plot that's not that engaging. And you get a couple of good scenes where Robin Hood's shown off his arrow work or the sheriff's been villainous. But you have a lot of other scenes of things happening. You're going, eh, I don't care. Yes, something's happening. Um, I'm pretty bored with most of it. It's just a film that lacks energy. And even Terence Fisher, he's doing his best to give this thing energy. I mean, he shoots stuff well. He paces it as well as he can. Because uh, Fisher had a traditional pace and his films had a good pace, but they also allowed you to soak in the atmosphere. Which doesn't work in this film because there's nothing there on the page that really demands that much attention. So he's he's trying his best with a script that's not up to his standards. And it's coming through that it's not up to his standards and it's just this tedious story that never hangs together. So you get fun things, like you've got you've got a nun, the head of a nunnery who's corrupt and who's got this weird incestuous thing with a villain because she's his sister and it's like weird, but it's never developed. Nothing's developed. Everything's just this weird thing of, Little scenes that work, but the lots of scenes that don't work, and it's just a film that's very disappointing. Because I was looking forward to this, and then I saw it, and it was like, that's it. Because I mean, it's a pretty short film, but it feels like there's still lots of pad in it. It just does not feel like a strong film. It's probably the most bored of being a Terence Fisher film, to be honest. It just feels like he was given a dud script, and he did his best, and he hired some good actors, and said, let's, let's go, let's try. <laughs> But there's, there's, only, there's only so much you can do, and you've got an actor who's too old for the part. He may have been fine on TV for the part, but in the cinema, he looked too old. So then we'll go to a challenge for Robin Hood, which was made in the late 60s. I mean, they planned to do a sequel to Sword of Sherwood Forest, and then it fell away pretty quick. I think because the film didn't do as well as expected. People thought because Richard Green would do well, and it did okay. But it didn't gather enthusiasm to do more. And Hammer liked doing sequels, so it must have maybe 
what you'd have to pay for it to really come back and do another one compared to what it would bring in. Maybe it wasn't really worth it. So they developed another Robin Hood film for a while, but it came and went in the Hammer hierarchy. And eventually they brought it together called A Challenge for Robin Hood. It had a director who is not that well known. It had a right, the director did Hunter Baskervilles and uh, Play of the Zombies. Two very good films. And this one's also a good script as well. Far better than Sword of Sherwood Forest. And it has an origin story for Robin Hood where basically you, you see him become Robin Hood. He's playing him as a, a guy who's rich, but he's a lower end of the aristocracy, of the local aristocracy. His uh, father dies, and his the eldest brother is the villain of the film who kills the middle brother and frames Robin Hood for it. And also Robin's on the run. He, he ran into these guys who live in, outlaws live in the forest earlier in the film. He saved a boy. So when he's on the run, they save him. And they join up to become Robin Hood and his merry men. And then they have to try and save people who helped Robin Hood escape from the castle in the first place, which is spelled Scarlet. And little John, who's also involved in the mix. But he's not arrested, but he helps him escape and so he's an outlaw. So the first hour is based on the setup of how the Robin Hood and his merry men got together. And then there's a final section where they have to defeat the Sheriff of Nottingham and Robin Hood's bastard brother who killed his father. And it's it's wonderful. It's it's silly but it's wonderful. And Barry Ingram plays Robin Hood and he's a lot of fun. He gets a character, he understands exactly what film he's in, he plays it to the hilt, he's very enjoyable. All the actors playing the, the supporting parts, like Will Scarlet, Alan O'Dell, Fire Tuck, they all know their parts as well. They all know exactly what they're doing. There's nothing deep here. Let's have fun with this. And it works. All the scenes where you see the villains and villainous stuff are played straight. All the scenes of Robin Hood playing, being Robin Hood and being, uh, you know, sly work because Barry Ingham has a confidence to pull it off. You've got a decent maid, Marion, who's not given much to do, but the actress is nice. And there's a, a decent actress who ended up working with Kubrick later on. It's not her best performance here, obviously, because she's given nothing to do, but she does her best with what she's got. There's a weird subplot where there's a fake maid, Marion, and a real maid, Marion. It doesn't really make sense, but it still works to give a bit more intrigue. So even this film, even the bits that maybe don't hook up right, they still work for, for a fun Robin Hood film. You know, you have a much better villains. In this one, the villain is just a guy who's greedy, who f kills his own brother, frames Robin Hood to get the money, and then suffers through it because Robin Hood then goes into the forest and steals all the tax money, steals all the money coming into him, steals all his goods coming into the castle, and makes his life a living misery. He has a couple of plans to catch Robin Hood, None of which work. They're all kind of typical Robin Hood stories. There's a, there's a sequence in a um, fair where Robin Hood saves uh, Will Scarlet and Maid Marion, which is wonderful because it's nice and silly. There's a the rest of the scene with him and Little John. There's lots of fun stuff that don't need to be there, but they're done with such confidence that it's enjoyable to watch. You have a Sheriff of Nottingham who's much smarter than the Peter Cushion version, who knows that this villain aristocrat's a moron, and he manipulates the whole thing and gets away with everything. <laughs> you know, he's a total scumbag, but he's enjoyable because he's a proper Sheriff of Nottingham that you really enjoy watching. You know, it's just everything about it works. It's exactly what it needs to be. It's an hour and a half long, or a bit longer than that, but it works. Everything about it works, exactly what it is. It's not a revisionist Robin Hood the way you would get with Robin and Marion. This is probably the last of the old school versions of Robin Hood before. The Robin Hoods were influenced by Errol Flynn. This is the last of them before the revisionist version started to come in. But it really works because the obviously is inherited by people who watched the Errol Flynn movie as kids and don't know exactly what movie they're making. They're not trying to be clever, it's just this is the movie we're making, everybody knows what it is, let's have fun. And it's just fun, it just comes across as fun. And it's colourful, they all wear the Lincoln Greens, and explain it's there for camouflage. 
There's a couple of dodgy plot points of how the sheriff's been escape at some point. That's kind of dodgy. But it doesn't mark at least the, the big fights in the end, so you don't really care. Everything's difficult enough that Robin Hood has to actually use his brain and try and be clever to get round things. So he's not uh, dealing with morons like he was in Shot of Sutter Sheriff Forest, but everyone's a moron. And it's like, he's an easy defeat because they're idiots. And this one, he has to make some effort. So yeah, I mean, this box set is very enjoyable. I, I, uh, even though I was like in Sutter Sheriff Forest, you get some good extras, like you get a Kim Newman commentary, and he's also got an interview with him. You could, uh, Jonathan Rigby talking about um, Charles with Robin Hood with Kevin Lyons. That's good. You get another little, bunch of lot of interviews as well. It's a really nice set. It's only like £25, and it really, you get your money's worth from this one. You get a booklet, you get a poster. It's a very enjoyable set, so I'd highly recommend it. If you're a Hammer fan or if you're a Robin Hood fan, it's a very good set. And you get one really good film. You also get Young Robin Hood, the children's BBC version as well, which I've not watched. But you get that too if you want it. There's a commentary in that as well. So you get a lot for your money from this box head. So it's highly recommended. So that's me for now. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>